store that we have stuff which is not quite complete and there's a few holes perhaps and perhaps there might be questions about is it best way of doing things. So um, I have sort of aimed at a, a fairly good knowledge of Drupal already. So um, feel free to stop me at any point, ask any questions. Um, I have to be interrupted. So I'm James. I work for Code Enigma and we have sweets. <laughs> so uh, if you haven't already had sweets, go and get some sweets. Um, I've been doing Drupal for five or six years and um, I came from a print background originally and I started out with Enigma and I sort of progressed into development. Um, but I still am, you know, do quite a lot of theming. I want to get rid of themas. <laughs> Maybe that connection. So, <laughs> starting out with who does what. So, depending on the size of the project, you might have far more people. <coughs> so, I've just kept it down to perhaps a minimum. Developer. Fairly obvious, someone that writes some code and some code to the project. Site builder, put together modules, custom or otherwise, uh, conscious, um, fit them all to get your site working. When you get around to your custom theme, you suddenly need more than one role. Unlike other frameworks or ways of developing websites, um, in Drupal we've got this concept of a thema. So we don't just take designs and sit them in. Uh, we need theme because the theme system is complex and there's quite a lot that has to be done at different levels. So some of its configurations, some of its files, some of its CSS, HTML, PHP. It's often the case that a thema is someone who's forced into learning PHP. <coughs> That's the style of book. We've got FEMA designing next to each other. But in reality, there's often a bit of a separation. You've got a designer who wants to design <coughs> fancy websites, and you've got a FEMA who knows the reality of making that in Drupal. <laughs> and there's you know, a bit of a disconnect there. Right, short side. We haven't had a Dries note, no Dries here. So, if you've been to a Dries note at some stage in history, you've probably heard him talk about, or well, talk about in this blog, I think it's 2005, this. Eliminating a developer. So, the idea of Drupal being this configurable system, you put together things, um, make some choices, and you build a website, which is which works. Actually, I think there's been talks you know, this weekend about how you can do that. You can work for very fantastic sites, no coding, just put them together, super. But in reality, especially if you're working on you know, quite unique websites, you can't really get rid of developers. <coughs> also, you need someone to write those tools in the first place anyway. So, I don't think you can get rid of them. <coughs> but, Thinking about Drupal being this configurable system that site builders can use to put together complicated sites, well, maybe we can get rid of it. said the developer would get happy on that. <laughs> so, how? How to be able to So, start with your designer. Now your designer needs to be a special <coughs> Your designer is different in fact in terms of what a web designer is, but I've always seen it as a web designer, as someone that designs websites and produces the front end markup, you know, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But they know all those technologies really well. So they write fantastic HTML and they really know what they're doing. So they're really up to date, they're using all the best current new technologies. <coughs> so, for example, preprocessors are 
really simple way of writing CSS. Um, they're really keen on performance. <coughs> they want the front end to be super fast on really sort of small devices that um, don't have much processing power. And they just use it as a full stop. They just want to do the best. So that's your design. <coughs> now there was a comment about this the other day uh, saying that, yeah, <laughs> but then maybe if your designer isn't like that, Get another designer. Lots of fun with that. So, um, yeah, they love talking about all this sort of stuff. And you don't really, as a developer or a site builder, really need to know much about this stuff necessarily. But this is what your designer was thinking about and the processes that you want to use. So, I spoke to our designer about this. And I said, so you're doing front end stuff, what tools do you want to use? And I said, yeah. Okay, so I know more than two of those. Um, but you know, there's there's stuff out there, there's new techniques all the time, there's new problems uh, you know, in web design and new ways of solving things. So your fantastic designer understands that they're designing for a CMS, so they need to design a, a system. Um, they do that, and then hand over all of that front end stuff to site builder. All of that CSS and JavaScript that they've written will go straight into the feed. And then that HTML, that's the style of that. The site builder. So we pop over to developer now. We've got to set up one or two things, so some coded things. So your developer <coughs> type code is a theme. So, okay, so you do need to do some theme work, but this is not work for the theme work. You might use a base theme. We've been experimenting, experimenting with base themes for this, and we've been using the all work a little bit, and we use some of it, and yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, we might fill up our own. <coughs> Whatever, you end up with a simple kind of theme, and there's a few things that you need. So, um, I've just made the layout CSS from the start. Um, that made it from the start. And the bare minimum that we've added, um, we've, we've got a page.tpl, because this is how Drupal uh, likes to write the page.tpl, and that's what you find in the system module. Um, system module. And we change it so it just outputs that. <coughs> and then um, it's very difficult to get rid of the block system entirely when you're doing any kind of build. And your standard block templates got this in. And it's very important mainly for the system main block, which contains the content, the main content on the page. And you want to override that and you want to just put its contents. So just pop them back. So that's, we've got a block template file in there that's going to and do with uh, template suggestions. So that's our theme. <coughs> and then in that, you would put all your CSS and JavaScript, etc., that your super design is designed. You're going to need a layout or two, so this is more developer work. Because um, we're going to be using tools <coughs> and space week, and so we need to define some, some layouts for those. So you might create custom your custom module, um, and you might define um, some way of finding these different layouts and things that you create. Um, here's, here's one, and it's our one column one, and it contains yeah. So there's a bit of a pattern there. A developer might have to help with a method of uh, switching off all the supply CSS and JavaScript. Now some base themes do that for you. You can uh, find at least a handful of modules that might do stuff to the CSS. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything that actually does JavaScript switching off, but you've got Drupal uh, Alter CSS and Drupal Alter JS. JS Alter and CSS Alter. So you've got those. So you might need to do a bit of custom stuff. But the main thing is to turn them off first and then add in what you need. 
current one. So now, okay, so developer set everything up, site builder comes in, a few required modules. So uh, these are what we're using at the moment, plus a few others as and when we need them. But the basis is space week because that gives you control of your fields and your content types, and quite a few other helpful things too. Uh, semantic views, because even though the, the newest version of views gives you a lot of control over that, but you still need semantic views to have complete control. Um, so we're using panels and panels everywhere. Again, panels for controlling all your, all your layout, and panels everywhere for the layout of the page level. So basically, remember that page.tpl file where we're just printing out content? That's because we're allowing panels everywhere to take complete control and of course everything that appears on the page. And semantic panels, which like semantic views, allows you to override the markup. Um, we, we've actually fought that and we've sort of added a few extra things. So our fork version by default turns off all markup and then adds extra settings for regions, um, which semantic panels by itself doesn't do, so you can uh, control wrappers around regions. Are you happy with panels, by the way? So panels regions are you know, just like regions have a header and a content header inside of like, um, <coughs> is your, um, your patch to size of panels online in the design box? Yes, so I've put it in my sandbox and um, so I'm doing it. Um, and I've, I've put it in YouTube as well for uh, semantic uh, panels as well. So, so um, if you haven't used the space week before, um, you can just use this great reset of things and to start with your default field template being a full reset. So you see that just up there. That way you can um, start from scratch and then just wrap your fields as you need them to be wrapped. So for example, and it isn't a standard image field, um, at the moment uh, using that full reset you'll just get your image output like that which, if you remember your standard Drupal, would normally be like that. So there's a huge difference. Um, if we go on to the expert template, and that's where you can decide that, okay, these fields, these images in this instance, yeah, we want to wrap them in, uh, whatever. Um, including, um, if you've got a multiple uh, instance field, so you've got several images, you could wrap it in a and all the list or something like that. Um, a very handy little thing here which helps you get rid of wrappers around views as well. Not to be missed. And this is uh, the space week settings for your actual content types. So your, your wrapper around your actual uh, node <coughs> view mode, um, you can use a step that to be reset to something. In panels, um, this is uh, the variant for the actual uh, the page, so the panels everywhere. Uh, and obviously, you'll need a few more things in there. You need <coughs> messages. Um, so this is where you go to decide what content you want to appear. Um, semantic panels gives you this kind of control. So, for example, um, that. That page title decided that we want to wrap it in uh, page one, and we're not adding any classes to it whatsoever. So basically, your site builder just goes through and configures all of that. So what you would start with, that's just um, so that's usually start. So that's just Google's default output. That's just one node. Um, so you can see we're just actually, you can see there is actually the um, the title there just about the image that's not wrapped in anything at the moment, and that actual um, uh, we've got the image and we've got the body field so that's just not wrapped in anything at all. so just having a Sort of closer look in so you can see a bit better. Um, 
your designer is obviously given these HTML templates and so says, I want this to be uh, wrapped in this. And so the uh, site builder can just go into those various config settings and change them. So obviously I'm not very good at this whole kind of snaps approach to CSS and I've just kind of put in a classical name, but um, you know, people, I don't need to know that. It's the designer who knows that and tells them what to do. So um, it was very easy to just add that in. And um, one other change I've made from semantic powers is just changing that. Um, they've got a drop down for choosing which wrapper and it was limited to a certain level. We just thought actually we just want to text it all. So great. So if there's new HTML elements and we don't know that yet <laughs> in HTML6, then well, we yeah, just can't even find it. So that can be changed. Um, so this is something from a site that we have um, actually done this with. So a smallish site, but just very easy to get this kind of very clean, um, <coughs> non drupal marker output. And the great thing about it was that the designer just went away, designed the site, created the HTML uh, using fancy tools, um, created the CSS, using SAS and things, um, and just basically stacks out the CSS, that what comes into the theme, and then Drupal was configured to output exactly the same marker. So really nice and easy. So some rules that we followed, so never write a template file, just avoid it. They've been written for you. So these, these modules that we're using, they're fundamentally supplying all your templates, so you don't need to write a template file. Except we do, but <laughs> well, it's just odd things. So you know, you've got you know, what do you do with <coughs> menus and that things? So if you if you pop back here, you'll find that we didn't bother sorting out. We didn't want to use in our in our menu items, and we would it base and just come back to there. You know, because that would just we couldn't do that in the, in the UR. So we just ignore it. Um, and always start back, you know, so that, that slide I showed you earlier on was just no wrappers. Just start from scratch and then just build up as you need it through the UI. And then think carefully about the wrappers and, and how you want to add them. So do you want to add them uh, at the sort of content type level? Or is it better to add a wrap around something when you actually place it in your panel? And then do you want to actually um, add the wrapper at the kind of node level panel or on the actual page panel? So think carefully about that kind of thing. Um, view modes as well, so it's another thing actually. Um, it's, we just we found it made sense for using views, uh, make sure you set some view modes in your, in your content types so you don't have to <coughs> mess around with fields and uh, views uh, using the face of chapter two. Um, not, there's nothing wrong with that, it's just it felt more consistent with the new mode. So, so why is this good? It gives designers freedom. So um, our designer has just loved the fact that he could just go away and use his fancy tools. Um, he's been using something called Hammer um, for Mac, so which allows you to write write your HTML on little bits and pieces and then you it. So very much like you would design little bits and pieces of HTML for a CMS, uh, he works in that the same way, but without messing around with CMS, he uses this cool tool, he presses a button and a whole page appears and it posts it somewhere and people look at it and he gets it signed off and that's a lovely way of working for him. So that makes things easy for site builders because they know that every time they need to uh, make a change and make a markup appear in a certain way, there's a consistent kind of pattern to it. They just um, go into the UI and, and make changes there like when they build the site. Also, um, these things are very close to each other. So when you build your content, you always end up on the managed display um, for them anyway. So you're there and at that point, oh yeah, yeah, I'll change the mark. Rather than it being a task to do later by the feed, uh, in a file somewhere. And if you've been doing Drupal for a little while, even a short while, you may have seen one or two programs. 
And if you're not messing around with the team there, if no one on the team is messing around with the team there, if no one's pressured to make a quick fix in a hurry with the team there, then um, avoid that problem. And your team's smaller. If you've got rid of someone. <laughs> we like unemployment. <laughs> Do we actually do this? <laughs> we keep theme up. <coughs> because our, our design of reading those people quite well anyway. So I kind of set up the system for him, and he goes away and designs it in his cool tools, and then sits there and puts a site together. Click, 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 click. And puts the market that he wants. He's happy. We're happy. Done. And tell me what they play in connects what the configuration system is doing. How do you manage kind of moving it from your dev site to stage into production without having the loads of point and clicks to do? Okay, so how do you export it? I think all of it goes into features. So uh, fortunately, you know, displays, we panels, views, everything, so it can all go into features. So yeah, that was an important thing to do for us because it's all part of our the process. So. There's traffic where I think the market's really from. Really from there. Actually, you know, it's really into the other. Yeah, so. You've got panels, you've got um, just traffic going down like that. Yeah, so that's the thing about actually about thinking about where you put your traffic in. So it's like throughout the whole process, it's an add minimum amount markup where, you know, at every single stage, <coughs> you're always just adding markup around the field to just. Minimum you need to do, try and avoid it because you can use things like field group, the field collections, and you can put things together and add wrappers around at that point. So maybe not all, it's not so flexible, maybe later on you will need it in a different um, sort of format on the page. So, yeah, I haven't got too lost yet. Oh, we've only done the smallest yeah. size but so far, so. If you go down the other approach, then get into a small market. It's more robust in terms of say the algorithms in time, you know, the page to get handled with us. Obviously, you know, I'm probably not going to be what the size, but because you have the time to stand, because the way you can just get to the end of the page, like what I've done, I mean, you're not going to try and build a page at all, but okay. Yeah, so a lot depends on who is maintaining the site and looking at it, but if you think of most um, sites either done, pushed out, and then things like that aren't changed, or you've got to maybe sort of finish sites where you've got someone who does know uh, a bit of Drupal, but is a site builder, and they're maintaining the site, then they're not the really going to think of So someone who really knows kind of Drupal, and then could add, you know, might happen to have a view, and then just follow some simple instructions to kind of put them up. Sorry, I'll be okay. Um, yeah, I only stripped it out just because it looks like it's a good job. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's not so Yeah, so, um, yeah, so you've got to do, make that kind of decision. So also JavaScript as well, when you're stripping all of that out, you suddenly can't stick in the use so I expect that to work. But then, our thinking was actually any asset that you need, any JavaScript, any CSS, you really, in this day and age, really need to think about what you're sending out. You know, keeping your um, requests, in your requests down. And, you know, do you need jQuery? You looked at performance of the spider web, it's kind of hard coding to your part. No. So, so I just heard some, I'm not using the spider web, I just heard some different. Yeah, unfortunately, at the same time as this session, there's a machine session. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it would surely be cash here, so, yeah, I wouldn't. I, you don't run into YouTube yet, yeah. No. Yeah. Cool. Thank you.